<sighs> okay, this is wrong. The bike will turn by itself because some cables are just way too short. Some are too long. I'm gonna show you what mistakes people usually do in cable cutting and housing cutting and how to do it so that there's almost no friction between the cable and the housing. Let's see, this is too long. This is quite okay. The cable is rusty, that's another problem. This is too long. This here is just, this is too short. If you wanna break the rear brake, which is the mechanical disc, you simply turn the, cable, the, the handlebars to the right. So we're gonna fix it. I'm gonna show you how to measure your housings now. We're starting with the cutting because I'm replacing everything. This is the proper bicycle cable cutter with a special side for opening the Teflon ending on the housing. That's, that's very important. Then you have this thing for squeezing the cable ends or those caps, and it's really sharp. You want to have sharp thing. Uh, this is the general cable cutter, and these are the pliers, which can also be used for cutting cables. I have high quality uh, Nipex, for example, for example, but I never use these for cutting cables. I have a special tool for that. Mistake number one, a big one, it will make your job much, much longer, is when you replace the old housings cut the cable, throw it away, and then think about the length of the new one. When you're building a new bike, then you will have to somehow measure it. I'm gonna show you that also by yourself. But when you have the old housing, it's much easier to, for you to say, okay, I would like to have this one shorter or longer. Now, when it is too short, when it is too long, I'm gonna show you what too short is. This is definitely too short you have tension, too much tension on the housing. This curve here is bad for the housing. So there will be a lot of fr friction just at one place, probably just, just around here. And then what would mean too long? If the housing was too long, it will be moving. So you're shifting and instead of your derailleur to react right away, the housing will, will move. You don't want to have straight housings. You don't want to have very long housing, but you want to have, I would say for this one, I will make this curve a little bit longer so that there will be like nicer, but shorter surface where the cable really uh, pushes against uh, the housing when you're shifting, right? When we are doing this thing, it's equally here, right? So. No, you don't want to have straight one. Maybe you think, okay, I'm going to go straight, zero friction. No, you want to have, I would even say a little bit longer than this. If it's really long, like on that side for the brake, it moves while you are trying to brake in. This one, I'm going to make it a little bit higher, a little bit longer. So don't throw them away because you have now a really nice uh, reference point and that's how we use the old housings. Okay, now I'm gonna cut the cable because I'm replacing the cable also. Then release the mounting bolt. Yeah, I should have shift, uh, shifted to the highest gear. I'm gonna do it right now. Here's my shifting cable. So I'm pulling on the cable, shifting to the highest gear. Lower, higher, okay? That means if you have seven speed, that's the seventh gear. The first one is the lowest one or or the largest one. We wanna have the chain on the smallest one. Okay, well done. Another tip for you guys, if you're replacing only the cable, not the housing, so the housing, this will stay. Pulling the cable like this is a big mistake because you are pulling all the dirt from the cable into the housing. So before you pull the cable, you should have cleaned the end of the cable and any part of the cable which is exposed, right? So this part, this part should be clean and the, the end part should be clean. And then we have another part right there. So I would clean this also if I wasn't replacing the housings, but I do replace them. Then we prepare the shifter for the removal of the cable. Usually the shifters will have here just one little like plastic screw. This one has at least two. This is the worst one I would say because you need to remove the whole cover. 
that's it. This is my gear indicator and I'm ready now to pull the cable away and this chip shifter is not the best design for that I would say. The cable is now removed and as you can see a lot of it is covered with rust. That's mostly the external part. Having the cable out of the way, I'm free to use my housing as I want. I can measure it, but also decide how do I want to route it. Usually I want my right side cables to go to the left side of the handlebars. Here it's not possible because the stoppers here on the frame are made so that I need to go from right side to the right side. And the big mistake here is not measuring the housing with the handlebars turned to, the, to both sides. As you can see, when I'm turning to the right, all these are too short, way too short. So somebody just didn't have idea how to do it. Uh, and I see I could even make this cable a little bit shorter. And I will. It's really flexy. And when I'm turning more than 90 degrees, it's still a lot of it left. So I'm gonna have this one cut, I would say, like that, which is two inches shorter. What am I gonna do? I'm taking this one, I will cut it, and then I will cut the new one. That's my length. That's what I'm looking for. Next thing, even on such a cheap bike, I do not use uh, cheap housings. I'm using high quality, this is really high quality Lex SL from Jaguar. It's just a little bit more expensive on like two meter, not even two meter length of, uh, of the housing, but it's so much better. So let's measure this one. Remember that the ends that are on your housing make it a little bit longer, right? So I measure a bare housing. This is my length. And the first housing is ready, not just yet. Not yet, and that's the third mistake. I've seen this so many times on new bikes. Okay, I've made the cut, but the Teflon here inside, there's a little Teflon pipe inside of your housing, especially on this side, is closed. Let me show you that. And that will create a lot of additional friction. So what do we do? We use either the special end of your bicycle cutters or a pick. And to be honest, I'm using a pick because I can go a little bit further with it. I'm more free to use it around like this, having nice hole for the cable on both sides. All right. And for the new housing, I'm not using the ends from the old one because there might, might be rust inside with some mud. I'm gonna use new ones. And here they are, number one. Make sure it goes snug all the way. Number two, cool. Let me see again. It goes here like that. We're looking good. We are looking really good. Here's the second one. We have three for the rear derailleur. And this one I would like to have a little bit longer, so I remove it, remove the ends, and I'll add one inch to this one. Important rule, principle guys, you can always make your housing shorter, but, but almost never longer. So this is this one plus inch. Opening ends. And make sure you go inside this Teflon pipe, not between the Teflon pipe and the housing, which is also possible to do. Two new endings. And like this. Might be a little bit shorter. So I'm gonna cut it. Remove the ending. Boom, boom. I like it now. This is where the cable will be rubbing against the, the housing. If this was uh, shorter, you would have more surface where cable actually pushes against the housing and the housing is still very stiff. So that's my take on it. And now the last one. And we're going to add an inch right here also. Maybe a little bit less than an inch. 
that's my length, plus a little. Ah, we, we have a nice Jaguar sign right here. Lovely. Yeah, that's what I wanted to have. This is beautiful. <laughs> now the cable. I'm not using the cheapest housing and the cheapest cables. This cable is the stainless steel polished, so it's very expensive. So I'm not using it for this bike, but this cable is still quality. It's slick stainless, not as slick as those gold ones I showed you, but it will be beautifully working. Another important mistake. You are routing your cable and the end of the cable, because it will always be too long, is on the floor. You always clean your cable. And it's very, 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 very important. <laughs> I have a clean rug here, even though I wouldn't touch the floor, I would still clean it. Some housings, high quality housings are pre-looped, which means you have the loop inside. This one I think is pre-looped. I'm not adding additional loop here, but what I do when putting the cable into the housing doesn't wanna come in. So what you do, the best way now is to open your housing. Once my housing is open, I only push my cable through the shifter. I will help myself with the pick, okay, because there were two holes it needs to be threaded through. Then make sure the end of the cable sits in its final place, which on this shifter is here. Now my cable goes through the housing and now if the cable stops in the housing, like if it stops, it doesn't stop right now, you can always remove the housing from the other end. If it still stops, you can remove the end and then thread only the end on the cable. But now it goes with no problem. Remember that now you need to have the final decision how your housing will be routed with other housings. So is it between, is it on the outer side, on the inner side? Don't break the cable and the housing. The cable is not touching the floor. This is the midsection. See, now it stops, okay, it goes. And now we go to the derailleur. Go. Now I want my bar adjuster to be totally threaded in. It's in and now I go back by maybe two or three turns like that. When my cable has no slack, I put tension on it. I can now fasten this bolt. You can also use a special tool for putting the tension on your cable. And it's this, you see, I can even pull on the derailleur and now fasten this mounting bolt. Done. This bar adjuster might also be on the shifter side, but it's not on this model. Let's check the shifting now. Okay, too much pressure on the cable. And it really doesn't matter now whether you have Altus, Tourney or XT, it should be working very, very lightly. A sharp cutting tool will mean that your cable will not fray after you cut it. And then you see this is made for putting your end cap on the cable, but somehow I do prefer my little pliers for this. Like that. Cool. And so the end is not too long. The housing doesn't move while shifting, while putting the pressure on the cable. You see, it's the derailleur that reacts, not the cable. We have nice curves on the cable and I will be able <laughs> to turn my handlebars without breaking the housing. So now I'm gonna do all the other housings, but you know the principles. Thanks for watching guys, see ya.